rotorization. In the previous video, you were introduced to the problem of Hamiltonian simulation. So, rotorization is the simplest approach to simulate the time evolution of a quantum system. Usually, it is extremely difficult to exponentiate a Hamiltonian. However, there are a lot of models where the Hamiltonian can be written as a linear combination of local terms, where each term acts only on a part of the total system. The Hamiltonian is called k-local when h acts on n qubits and each h elf term acts non-trivially on at most k qubits instead of n qubits. The local Hamiltonian simulation problem is important because most Hamiltonians that occur in nature are k-local. It is also assumed that each local term is Hermitian and can be directly exponentiated, which means that we can present its evolution as a quantum circuit and run it on a quantum computer. It would seem that it is now possible to decompose the evolution of the total Hamiltonian into the product of the local term evolutions. And since each exponent can be represented as a quantum circuit, the Hamiltonian simulation problem is solved for the whole system. But since each local Hamiltonian is an operator, this equality is satisfied only when all local terms commute with each other. The proof of this statement is given in a separate video. In general case, when local terms do not commute between each other, trotterization comes to the aid. Trotter product formula gives a limit when exponentiation is possible even for not commuting parts. This formula has a long history and, when applied to the problem of Hamiltonian simulation, appears in the literature under many different names, which are listed on the left side of the screen. The story is as follows. The Lie product formula, named after Norwegian mathematician Sophus Lee, was introduced in the study of Lie groups at the end of 19th century. The Lie Trotter product formula extends this to certain unbounded linear operators A and B and Suzuki then studied approximants of exponential operators. The proof of this expression can be found in a separate video. We can apply this formula to the k-local Hamiltonian even when the local terms do not commute with each other. Then we get. Since the limit of this formula is infinite, we have to truncate the series when implementing this formula on a quantum computer. The truncation introduces error in the simulation. This truncation and application of Suzuki Trotter formula to Hamiltonian simulation problem is known as trotterization and it's widely used to simulate non commuting Hamiltonians on quantum computers. It is important to notice that when the local terms of the Hamiltonian commute, the identity is exact. Otherwise, it can be shown that for this formula, the error scales as a big O of the time squared divided by n. The letter n denotes the number of trotter steps. This number must be chosen so that the simulation error reaches the desired value. In other words, for small time intervals, n equal to 1 may be enough and long time evolution can be simulated by repeating short steps. The lead rotor formula only provides a first order approximation to the evolution, but there are also higher order formulas. The order of approximation determines how the accuracy of the formula changes for a given time. Thus, lead rotor Suzuki formula, together with its higher order generalizations, provides a simple approach to decomposing the exponential of a sum of operators. Despite significant effort, the error scaling of such product formulas remains poorly understood. Let's consider a small example. 
The Hamiltonian which we want to simulate is a sum of two Pauli matrices, x and z, and acts on a single qubit. This Hamiltonian is small enough so that we can perform an exact simulation and compare it with a simulation using trotterization for a different number of trotter steps. The qubit evolution under the action of this Hamiltonian is shown in the video. It is just simultaneous rotation around x and z axis of the block sphere. This exact simulation is performed and visualized using the Qtip library. Qtip is open source software for simulating the dynamics of open quantum systems. If we want to simulate the dynamics of the qubit using a quantum computer, we cannot simulate each Hamiltonian separately, because Pauli X and Pauli Z matrices don't commute. And this is exactly the case when we can take advantage of trotterization, where we evolve the whole Hamiltonian by repeatedly switching between evolving X and Z, each for a small period of time. The next step is to represent each product in Trotter's formula as a quantum circuit. This case is simple because the evolution can be represented exactly using rotations around x and z axis. Rotation angle then encodes the evolution time because indeed it really determines how much time it takes to perform these rotations. The quantum circuit for the Hamiltonian simulation looks like this. We will alternately apply rotations as many times as many trotterization steps we decide to use. Now let's compare the efficiency of trotterization for different number of trotter steps. Let us first perform an exact simulation with Qtip for some arbitrary time period. In the figure you see the expectation values of x, y and z components of the block vector. In the case of the spin half system, this will be the projections of the spin operator on the x, y and z axis of the block sphere. Then we perform a Hamiltonian simulation for different numbers of trotter steps using Qiskit. Here is the figure for one trotter step. The solid lines show the exact evolution and the stars show the time periods for which trotterization was used. A quantum circuit in this case consists of only two rotation gates. To calculate the state of the qubit at each time point, we must every time execute the quantum circuit with different rotation angles. One can notice that one step trotterization works well only for a very short time interval. Let's apply five trotterization steps. This means that we repeat rotations on the x and z axis five times with correspondingly changed rotation angles. In this case, the simulation of the evolution is slightly better. We have a good agreement with the exact calculations over a longer time interval. Thus, the longer the evolution you want to simulate, the more trotter steps you need to use. As you can see in the last figure, 20 trotter steps can simulate the evolution quite well for the time interval we have chosen. So, what's important to remember about trotterization? It's efficient for Hamiltonians, which can be presented as a sum of local terms. The more terms are commuting between each other, the more precise the simulation is. First order trotter formula is good for short time intervals, and if you want to simulate long time evolution, you will have to adjust the number of trotter steps. A quantum simulation algorithm using product formulas does not require ancilla qubits, making this approach advantageous for near term experimental demonstrations.